Welcome to our live training session here with the Mitsubishi Evolution 10. We're going to be learning how to calibrate and tune this vehicle using Reissue Flash open source tuning software. Let's jump into some details about this particular vehicle. It's going to have a bone stock 4B11 engine. Now, in addition to this, we have the typical bolt-on modifications we'll find on Evo 10. So, 3-inch turbo back exhaust, a upper and lower charge pipe that have been upgraded from factory. It has a front mount intercooler that's been upgraded from the factory piece, and it has an ETS intake. Now, in addition to all of this, it has a Garrett GTX 3576R drop-in turbocharger. And we also find that we have IED 1300cc injectors and a DW65C fuel pump. So we have all these modifications done. We're gonna be taking a look at how to calibrate this on 93 octane as well as on ethanol based fuels. We actually have a flex fuel kit installed onto the vehicle and we're gonna be running a Tefra V3 style ROM that's gonna allow us to do a full flex fuel style control. So we can go from pure pump gas of 93 octane and then put in whatever the ethanol blend we want in and vary the fuel, spark timing and boost to be able to achieve a much higher power levels safely on the stock engine. We have a lot to cover. Let's jump into our live training session so we can get started learning how to create our base calibration file and get our process started. Welcome to our live training session here with our 2014 Mitsubishi Evo 10. Now we just went over all the details of the vehicle. Let's jump into our ECU flash software so we can begin creating our base calibration file and start our live training process off in this video. So moving into our ECU flash software, I have it open on my laptop screen along with a few other softwares we're gonna be using in this training tutorial series. We have our Evo scan, we have our Megalog HD viewer, and we also have down here, um, I have a spreadsheet open that we're gonna be integrating into this particular uh, video here in building out our base calibration file. The file that I have open here, you can see at the top, it's gonna be open right now. This is a Tefra V3 based file. So the owner paid the $100 licensing fee the file is gonna be VIN specific, so we can't transfer this file to another vehicle. It's only gonna be able to use for this vehicle, and uh, we're gonna be starting off with this. We're gonna be doing flex fuel tuning, which is why we need the Tefra V3 ROM. This has a flex fuel sensor wired in to the fuel pressure sensor on the tank, and then we can convert that signal, it's a zero to five volt converted signal, into the ECU, and then it'll tell the ECU what the flex fuel content's going to be, and then we can figure out what kind of fuel ignition timing and boost that we want to deliver to the engine. So we're going to get into doing flex fuel tuning much later in our live training videos here. Um, it's not going to be probably till the fourth video, I believe, we're going to be doing the flex fuel based tune. We need to go and build a the, the base calibration file in this video, go through all the process and all the little details uh, specific to this vehicle. Then the next video we'll do our part throttle idle calibration process and then the following video we'll start to do our full throttle tuning and do our boost control tuning and then the fourth video we'll do our flex fuel control and then the last video we'll do, um, if we have time, we'll do cold start but I'm definitely going to be doing um, the uh, off dyno testing or drivability testing. We're going to go over some data logs what to look for so you can wrap up doing your tuning calibration process. So let's move in here and we are going to start off here modifying our file. First thing I want to do here before I go any further, I don't want to oversave or overwrite on top of this original Tefra V3 ROM. This is going to be the stock equivalent file that he emailed to the client. I'm going to save a new file name and then I'm going to leave this intact so I don't actually, again, save it um, because I don't want to go and overwrite this. I want this to be my base. If I ever want to go back to it for whatever reason, I want that stock equivalent file. So first thing is here, let's go to file, let's go to save ROM as, and I'm gonna go up here into my document section, and then I'm gonna go here into ECU flash, and then I have some folders in here, there's some projects I've worked with for the, uh, the, the, the training series here. Let's go into our new folder, and I'm gonna create a folder here, and I'll say 2014 Evo 10, and we'll say EPA. And then in here, we can go and save this as the save, and we'll just do it as original, that's gonna be the original file name, and then I'll go file, and save ROM as, and I'm going to save this as base map. So any changes we make beyond this point won't overwrite that original file that we previously had here saved, that original uh, Tefra V3 file name. So we're now able to go and modify the file as we'd like, and we don't have to worry about going and overwriting that original file. Very, very important because you don't want to go and essentially paint yourself in a corner. You could go back to the, the email where you he sent you the file and download it, but for whatever reason, if you can't access your email, you always want to have a copy of that as original. So we just want to uh, be very straightforward in how we're modifying our files and tracking um, in, in, in modifying them and saving them properly in the proper orientation. So we got that out of the way. That's good to go. Uh, next step here, or the next thing I want to point out and talk about here, this ECU went bad in the car. At some point, this car has about 100,000 miles on it. So the ECU went bad, and the previous owner 
had the ECU replaced with a 2010 model year ECU. And someone did the VIN rewrite and rekeying of the ECU so it was accepted by the vehicle and the CAN network so the car starts and runs. Um, this car is, it has to run on a 2010 ROM. Now we could go and uh, put a 2014 ROM in it if we want, we'd have to bench flash it to do that. In this case, we're gonna be sticking with a 2010 ROM. So we can see down here into the model year, it's a 2010 and we can see here the internal ID is a 55570306. So the three designates that it's a Tefer V3 ROM, but the 55570006 would be the stock base ROM. I think the 0005 is going to be the very uh, the parent ROM, and then everything else beyond that is going to be the uh, the the uh, off ROMs or the the. Uh, offspring to that parent ROM, I guess you could call it. So this is going to be uh, what we're working with, and it's a 2010. Even though we have a 2014 model here, the 2010 ECU, so that's what we're going to be sticking with. And I find that the 2010s are good model year as far as the ROM build goes, and they work very well because a lot of the things are defined. We're going to find that most everything in here is going to be defined. We're not going to have any missing XML code. You may find as you're poking around on all the calibration files I've defined in the training course, you may find several that don't have everything filled out. That's because those weren't developed as much as other ROM files. And I actually have within the course packet what the ideal ROMs are going to be. Um, those are going to be ones you always try to strive for and, and work with when you are going in and doing your tuning because those are the best defined or most defined ROMs for a particular model year range. So we're going to be starting off with this. I'm going to go and shrink down here. Every time we complete a section, we're going to be just collapsing it so we can move through the ROM a little bit easier. So we're going to go shrink down ROM info so, since we just talked about that. So we're going to go down here under Tech, Tefra XMod V3. This is where we have all the Tefra extra additional features that we can enable. Now right now I'm going to keep it simple and try not to enable a lot of these extra features. We'll actually go through um, in one of the future tutorial videos in this training course here. Uh, we're going to go through and set up a lot of these additional features. Let's just go set up the basics, which is going to be our knock light. We definitely want to have a knock light come on, uh, which is going to be allowing the, the check engine light to flash when you have knock. It's going to give you a heads up that there's something wrong. If we have a slow flash, that's going to be a small count of knock, and we can set the threshold for that. If we have a lot of flashes very quick, that means we have a high count of knock, a lot of knock going on. And then we can actually do throttle shutdown. If we start to get really massive amount of knock, we can actually close the throttle body so it saves the engine. So we want to set this up because we're going to be going into the calibration phase here, and we're going to be tuning our spark timing, and if we get too much knock, we want to see it. It's a nice indication on the dash because in the data log, you're not going to be able to see knock unless you're specifically looking at the channel and Evo scan. I guess you could do that, but I usually pay attention to what the wideband's reading in the car, and I'm logging the wideband at the same time, and I'm just making sure it doesn't lean out. So it's nice to have another visual uh, uh, representation on the dash to kind of catch your eye if there's knock. So that's why I like to use, or one of the nice fe features, and I like to use with the Tefer V3 ROM. So looking at here at the load required for cell on knock, 120 load. That's fine, that's when we get into boost. 100 load should be the equivalent of about zero PSI. Going down here a little bit further, knock sum for slow cell, or low knock, three counts, which is where it starts to pull up to a full degree of timing. That's something we definitely want to keep an eye on. One to two counts isn't a big deal, full throttle and a pull, but three counts, we definitely want to notice that. And that's where we set our low to, so we'll have three. And then we have a high knock, so five knocks or higher, it'll go and start to flash faster, so that's fine. There's a knock cell flash time, 1,000 milliseconds. That's going to be how quickly it flashes. It's going to be fine. It'll catch our eye. Uh, max TPS when seeing high knock. And in this case, we'll say 90%. We'll do equals and we'll do 90 here. And then we have, uh, looking down here any further, I don't think there's going to be anything else we really need to be worried about at the moment. There is a flex fuel control we can enable here. We will have to do that later, but we're not going to do that at the moment. And then we have up to nine different slots here for uh, map switching, which we're not going to utilize in this car uh, because we're going to be using the flex field feature, which just uses the first alternate map, and it's going to be blending between 93 octane and E85 levels and doing interpolation between our target boost, our target fuel, and our target spark. So we'll get into all that later. Again, I'm not going to muddy the waters up here. We're just going to make sure these basic details are taken care of. So that looks good. Let's go here and minimize our Tefra Mod V3. Uh, so now we're in our miscellaneous section. So this is where we need to go turn things off if we know it's going to fault out or throw a fault code for certain uh, things that we've deleted or certain things that could potentially cause us problems. So let's go down here and take a look. Uh, first thing is the enable catalytic monitoring. This is a P0420. Um, right now we can see it's set to a hex of 01. We're not going to modify this because this 
is going to be tied in if we go down here the p0139 we can see it's going to show us what the hex code should be changed to that's our oxygen sensor slow circuit bank one sensor two if we change it here it also changes our p0420 so i'm going to go here and i'm going to set it to disabled so we're going to go here and click thanks for checking out our teaser clip if you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current efi training we have to offer make sure you click right here if you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course click here and you don't want to miss any of the videos are going to be releasing on this channel so make sure you subscribe and click here thanks for watching and i'll see you guys later